Hi, my name is Don Shelby, after whom the Shelby knot is named, the only living human being after whom a tie knot is actually named. It was taught to me by a 92-year-old man named Jerry Pratt who came to the television station where I worked because I had been a reporter for 40 years. He hated the way I tied my tie, which was, I think, a four in hand at the time. And he said, I have a better knot. And he called me and called me and called me and called me. And finally, one day, he showed up at the station and attacked my tie. And he took it apart and he retied it with the way he had learned, I think, in military school. So he tied that tie and said, you'll never have to tie a knot another way because it's the simplest knot and it puts a beautiful dimple in automatically. And so I said I would, that I would tie my uh, tie that way in his honor for the rest of my life. And so I did. Then Richard Schmidt, who was the fashion editor of the New York Times, found out about this, uh, which was build a new knot. And he actually went to Italy and checked the records. And by golly, it was a new knot. No one had ever tied their tie that way, at least no one in recorded history, except Jerry Pratt. So it became known as the Shelby knot. So you can Google it. It'll show up as Shelby knot or the Shelby Pratt knot. Uh, but it is a uh, distinct knot in that a dimple automatically appears right at the end of the knot, which is something that uh, people in fashion have been trying for years to do because generally you have to stand in front of a mirror and fiddle with it and try to create a dimple because if you tie a, a Windsor full or half, it'll roll the tie over and be very smooth and not look very fashionable. So that dimple automatically appears when you put it in place.